So Photoshop's annoying, right? Like, I've been using it for years, teaching it for only slightly less, and it's saved me from living a life of, I don't know, whatever I'd be doing if I wasn't doing this. But I pay almost $60 a month to be perpetually annoyed. Yes, I'm going to rage uh, about that subscription model, but I have four other very pointed reasons why I woke up today and decided, I love you, Adobe, but I'm gonna pick a fight. If you don't know who I am, I'm Abby Esparza, and if you don't know where you are, you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. Now let's get the big one right out of the way. It's no secret that Adobe moving to a subscription model was controversial, to say the least. And I'm going to be honest and controversial myself, I don't think $10 a month for both Photoshop and Lightroom with continuous updates is a bad deal. I'll kill you! What it is, is unjustifiable to almost anyone who isn't making money or planning to make money using Photoshop. So let's just acknowledge the elephant in the room, some of y'all were stealing it anyway. But the change to a subscription model rolled out the red carpet for Photoshop's first real competitor, Affinity Photo. And that's a pretty big sign that people weren't too pleased with the move. Now, my real issue with it isn't the subscription per se or how much it costs. It's that they clearly lowballed Photoshop so they can make their other apps super expensive add-ons bullying you into getting the all apps plan like I feel bullied. Here are all the apps I pay for and will never touch which I think is most people's issue with most subscriptions. An add-on isn't adding extra value if I'm not going to use it. I just want to pay for the thing that I need and nothing more. I'm literally trying to give you money. But you know what? You don't have to give me money to download our free 100 figure stock bundle. Link in the description. Now I mentioned Affinity Photo earlier and a lot of my grievances actually do come from comparing the two. I used both so it's gonna happen. I still can't believe how dated and janky the filter previews are in Photoshop compared to Affinity Photo. I think it was only what, like in the last year, Han oh, not year, handful of years, that layer modes even had live previews. And I'm convinced it's only because Affinity Photo came out the gate with them. Now, for those who don't know, everything in Affinity Photo previews in real time. Meaning when you select a filter, the filter is applied to the actual layer, not in a weird little pop-up window. Some filters also have tactile controls where you can use your mouse on the layer to adjust the settings. The motion blur filter is the best example of this and controls like this are much more intuitive for a lot of people. While I prefer inputting numbers and even using sliders, more tactile controls tend to be more user-friendly for beginners. Adding live previews would just go a long way to lowering that notorious Photoshop learning curve. Comparing the gradient tool between Photoshop and Affinity Photo is always hilarious. It's so bad. And this also applies to brushes and layer masks. Listen, Adobe, the neural filters are super cool. Please refocus on the core functionality of Photoshop. These little windows kill me. Now, I say this fully realizing that adding live previews will likely make an already resource hungry program even more ravenous, but. Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. Now this one is going to be quick, petty, and maybe make me sound crazy, but honestly, if this list was actually in order of greatest annoyance uh, to least, this one would be at the tippity top. The transform slash crop tool, or more precisely, when it switches between only landing on either an odd or even pixel. And it knows magically which one I need so it can do the opposite, making it impossible to land on the size I want without zooming in you know, 5 million percent. Oh, you need it to be 563 pixels high? Nah, sorry, even Zor get the fuck. Keep it at PG-13 here. Let me know if this happens to you. My misery needs some company. Now we're gonna bring it back to some AP comparisons, because as much as I appreciate Affinity Photo existing and fully intend to do more tutorials with it, do let me know how interested you are in those. I like Affinity Photo a whole lot, but Photoshop will always be my main photo editor. So when I see something Affinity Photo has that Photoshop miraculously doesn't, I get incredibly annoyed. Multiple brush tips on one singular brush meaning brushes can source and randomize from several different images in just one brush. The most obvious brush type that benefits from something like that would maybe be splatter brushes, but even just adding one extra image source makes any brush with a defined shape 10 times more effective and useful. 
fire, clouds, grass, basically everything. The brush engine in Affinity Photo is just all around better. And yes, you may have noticed that you can create brushes that include full color, and creating brushes is just much simpler. You just go, hey, see what's on this layer? Make it into a brush. None of that faffing about in a new document. What Affinity Photo does right often just comes down to feeling more modern compared to Photoshop. I mean, why can't we do this in Photoshop? It would be so nice. It drives me crazy. Crazy. And we're going to wrap things up with the frame tool. Its sheer existence annoys me because I don't know what it does. Okay, I know what it does, but I don't know why it exists. God! And your t-shirts are too tight too, Billy! It's somewhat new, so Adobe clearly thought it was sorely missing after all these years we needed the frame tool. From what I can tell, it's just a worse way to make square masks. I've even googled it several times. If you use it or there's a use case for it that clearly is beyond me and my feeble brain, please let me know. If I'm going to dunk on something, I'd like to at least know why. I'm pro-informed talking. And let's call it a day. I'm satisfied with the amount of negativity I have successfully spread. Photoshop, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed and also mad. More tips and properly uh, fun SFX type stuff is coming soon, guys. I just felt kind of spicy today. Here, I'll put a different kind of spicy on screen. Get it? Because fire, fire's kind of spicy. Like if you like, subscribe if you really like. And with that, I'm Abby Esparza with photomanipulation.com. See you next time, guys. Hopefully sooner than three months.